Now that we've talked about a lot of wireless theory in this module, I thought what we would do now is go through a real world case study. One of the most common types of wireless devices that we install is a typical wireless router that we might have in our home. And I've got a real life situation I thought I would share with you from, uh, from beginning to end. I've uh, got a situation where I do some volunteer work for my church. I support their wireless network. And they've got a big event coming up where they have to have a few staff computers on the network. And right now, I've got three wireless access points scattered throughout the church. But when everybody comes in with their smart devices, we can have hundreds of connections on this wireless network and it can get really congested and sometimes it's difficult to, to get out on the internet. So what I wanna do is I wanna set up another wireless network that's password protected just for staff use during this day. Now what I've done is I've, uh, I've ordered just a, a typical small office, home office wireless router from Amazon using Amazon Prime. Let's check this out. Let's open it up, see what it looks like. This is, a, this is a Netgear that runs 802.11 AC. Let's open it up. And here a little bit later in this video, I'll show you how we set this up. and We'll get it configured. And then I'll take you on site where we'll install this and hopefully it's gonna give the, the church staff a good connection on that day. All right, let's get this open. Looks like we've got about three antennas here. Remember we talked about the number of antennas on your wireless device that can dictate your maximum throughput. But here's what our wireless router physically looks like. And let's go out to a live interface right now and let's see how to, let's see how to set this up. Well, now that we've taken the wireless router out of the box, I've plugged it into the wall to give it power. I haven't plugged in any of the ethernet cables but just by plugging it in, it comes up and it advertises its network name, its SSID. And I've gone to my computer and I've connected to that advertised SSID. And the instructions say I can log in with a username of admin and a password of password. So we'll do that to get logged in. And please remember what we're trying to accomplish in this video. This is to give you a general sense of the types of things you might set up on your small office home office router. Your configuration will probably differ from what I'm doing, but I want to show you some of the common settings. And one big difference is normally when you set up a small office home office router, you're connecting it into a DSL modem or a cable modem. In other words, you're connecting the internet port on the back of that wireless router into a device that's going to give that wireless router an IP address coming in from your ISP. And you'll notice right now that I don't have that. It says error not connected to the internet. Well, that's okay because in this particular installation, I'm not even trying to use this wireless router as a router. I don't want it to do routing. I don't want it to do network address translation. I don't want it to be a DHCP server. I'm simply using this to act as a wireless access point to get staff members into this church network where their connections are not going to be contending with all of the guest connections that are coming in. So I'm not even plugging anything into the internet port. Again, if you were installing a small office home office router, you probably would. What I want to do in this situation though is I want to set up the wireless network. I want to give SSID names to both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz ranges. I want to set up a password or a passphrase as they call it. I want to turn off the DHCP server on this wireless router because the church already has a DHCP server. I've got a Cisco 2600 series router set up as their DHCP server, and I want to assign statically an IP address to this router so that I can manage it, an IP address that would be part of the church's network. So let's do this. Let's go to the Advanced tab, and here's the IP address of this wireless router. I want to change that to 192.168.0.99. You can see that the DHCP server is currently on. I want to turn that off. Not concerned about the internet port being down. I'm not trying to get out to the internet via this router. But if you were, normally you're going to obtain an IP address automatically from your ISP via a cable modem or via a DSL modem. But sometimes you've got your DSL modem set up in a bridging mode, in a pass-through mode, where you need to have this device. You need to have your wireless router log in to your DSL provider. In a case like that, I would say that yes, my connection does require a password and I'm using point-to-point -point protocol over ethernet and then I can provide my username and password. But in my case, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not even trying to connect out to the internet. Let's set up the wireless network though. Let's go into wireless setup. 
and I'm going to change the SSID name for the 2.4 gigahertz band. I'm going to call this ECC underscore staff one. And in the 2.4 gigahertz range, that's where we stand a greater chance of interfering with another channel. And I've already got three wireless access points installed in the church. They're on channels 1, 6, and 11. And I'm going to be installing this wireless access point in very close proximity to a, a wireless access point that is running on channel 6. And I want to make sure that there's no interference. I want to give myself five channels of separation. I'll say I'll run on channel 11. And I'll set the passphrase to and I'm going to make this an easy to remember passphrase because this is a temporary installation. I'll say this is ECCST. And instead of giving an A for staff, I'll say at FF. And I'll do something similar for the 5 gigahertz range. I'll give it an SSID of ECC underscore staff 2. And with the 5 gigahertz range, we've got more frequencies to select from. There's less of a chance that we're going to be interfering with another channel. So I'm just going to let this wireless router automatically determine what it considers to be an appropriate channel. And I'm going to give a matching passphrase, so this will be easy to remember. ECC ST at FF. And I'm going to apply this. Now, when I apply this, this is going to knock me off of my network because I'm connected in using the default SSID. So after this is applied to the router, I'm looking at the router right now. It's going through its initialization process. I'm going to need to go over and select a different wireless network on my computer. Just checking right now to see if it's appeared yet. I just saw ECC Staff 2 pop up. So I'm going to connect to that. Let's connect to ECC Staff 2. And I'm just looking in the background to see if I've obtained an IP address. And I have. Excellent. So now my screen refreshes and we can see that our SSIDs have been updated. What else do we need to do? Well, I want to go into the LAN setup because I want to give this router an IP address that I can point to when I want to administer the router once it's installed. And I do not want this router to act as a DHCP server. First, I'm going to turn this off. The use router as DHCP server. I'm going to say, nope, don't do that. And I'm going to say apply. And it's going to reinitialize the router again. I'll speed forward here in the video so you don't have to wait through the reboot process. Okay, the router has now rebooted. And the final thing I want to change is the IP address. I want to be part of the 192.168.0.0/24 network. I'm going to set the static IP address for this router at 192.168.0.99 and let's apply this. And again, this is going to disconnect me from the router because I'm going to now be on a different subnet than the router is on. However, because I've saved this now, the router should be ready to install. So I'll see you next when we're actually arriving at the church and we'll get this set up and tested. Well, here we are. Here's the church where we're going to be installing the wireless access point. Let's go inside and hook things up. We're now in a wiring closet in the church that's centrally located to the devices that need to connect to this wireless access point. Notice that I've got the access point mounted horizontally, but it doesn't have a built-in antenna. It's really important that we mount it horizontally if we have a built-in antenna. But I've got these three dipole antennas. But I've got this horizontal, and the dipole antennas are sticking up. Remember, the radiation pattern of the electromagnetic frequencies is going to be in a donut shape. It's going to be going out, and I've got these angled a little bit down. We're on the second floor right now. So this is going to go down and capture some of the first floor, as well as getting the second floor using these three different dipole antennas. Now let's hook things up. I'm going to connect into an existing switch port and we'll apply power and we'll give this a few seconds to boot up. Well the wireless router acting as a wireless access point it has booted up and everything looks good according to the LED indicators. We've got a green power light indicating that it's booted up successfully We've got indicator lights showing us that both the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz bands are operating. And we've got a link integrity light on port number 4 because we're connected into the switch. Now we should be able to take a wireless device and connect to the ECC Staff 1 or ECC Staff 2 wireless networks and get connected to the network here in the church. Let me take a look at my phone and let's go check out my settings. Can I see the SSIDs being advertised? Yes, I can. 
I'm going to connect to ECC staff 2 and I'm going to open up an internet browser and let's see if I can get somewhere with my internet browser and sure enough I can I am on the internet connected to this new wireless access point and because this wireless access point is going to be used by just a relatively few devices as compared to the other access points like this one and a couple of others that I've got scattered throughout the church that really get bombarded when the crowds come in on Sunday morning. This should allow the staff to have plenty of bandwidth without contending for bandwidth with everybody else. And this has been a real world example of how we can take a wireless router, configure it, and uh, use it in this case as a wireless access point. Mm -hmm.